was a remarkable uh, opening with perhaps uh, 300 people um, in what is now considered to be the most beautiful and most spacious gallery in Palm Beach. I think this is the one that hands down is the is the absolutely show of the season. For most of us who are, are critics, uh, we see in Stephen Manolis uh, a kind of a rocket man who is accelerating so fast. Manolis is such an interesting character though. You know, he had an early career in finance. He uh, wanted to be a painter when he was a young man and his parents, like many parents, said, oh no you don't. And after he had made a success uh, at uh, Solomon Brothers, he concentrated on painting. As an artist, I believe in communicating through color. Hans Hoffman said, it's time to paint what you feel, not what you see. And I feel one of the great honors and blessings in my life was Wolf Kahn teaching me that concept. And I've adopted a philosophy that I call Red World, which is to leave my life full on and all in. Stephen Minotis uh, described himself as an abstract expressionist, but this is not completely, I think, do justice to what is going on here. Every, the work is all unmistakably his. It's his eye and his hand. But the varieties of pa paint handling, it's really true and different and distinct development from, from abstract expressionism. Many people wanted to be artists, not many, but some, and can become artists at a later stage in their careers with enormous success, all that pent-up energy will burst out, as it has here. And I would add, Miles' work is strong but different, but then they got together. I don't have any example of a painter and a sculptor getting together and producing such a striking work. I have a love for this seemingly inanimate piece of stone that starts out as a block, um, quite larger than this, all my stone comes from the mountains outside of Carrera, Italy, in the Apuana Mountains. Most of the marble is white, but the marble that I've chosen to work in is called Bardelio marble, and it has this wonderful gray-black look. But the working in marble is very personal. I know that sounds odd about something that's inanimate, but the stone is very unforgiving, but while it's unforgiving, if you treat it well, then you end up producing something that it is as wonderful and as beautiful as these works are. Uh, I've studied with um, Artigianis, an old group of masters in this little town in Italy called Pietra Santa, which means Saint Stone. The town was rebuilt by Michelangelo in the late 1400s when he saw that the stone above this city was special. And the Artigianis have taught me that there are many things about stone that are like life. The first time I went to hit a stone with a chisel, the Artigiani, whose name was Leo, took my hand and he said, Milo, because there's no miles in Italian, no, 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 don't hit the stone like this. If you hit it too hard, you can create a bruise deep in the stone. And he said, Miles, it's like raising a child. If you don't respect it right at the beginning, you don't know what may happen later on. And then he went on to explain that the different colored stones have different characteristics. White stones have a certain sound when you hit them, like a bing. But a darker stone or a black stone may even sound like hitting a piece of metal and go ding. The most challenging thing in these particular works is getting the movement. Uh, and once you get a starting point, as you can see, there are particular points here in the stonework where you start. This particular work has what is called a double helix. If you follow the lines of the stone, they actually turn back into one another, and they keep on moving almost infinitely, which adds to the beauty of the work, the story behind the work, and to me, the power of why these works are so important to me. I think this is one of the most remarkable shows I've ever seen. 